Hi everybody, welcome to the Infinity Futures YouTube channel. Uh, what we're going to do here is show you how to create what is commonly referred to as a spread chart, or Sierra uses a study called the difference study to create a spread chart. So let's do an example. What I'm going to first do is open up a crude oil chart for March contract, okay, CLH7, open intraday chart. And now I'm going to open up one for the next month, which is CLJ7, that's April crude open in trade chart and now I have two charts open in the same chart book you can see them down here next to each other the tabs I'm actually gonna go to the window menu and tile them vertically on the screen so we've got them next to each other like this alright so on the left here we have CLH7 and on the right we have CLJ7 so how do we create a chart that ultimately shows a spread price instead of just the price of the outright futures contract so in other words we want to subtract one of these from the other and then display that value as a study or even in some cases as the main price graph all right so here's how we do that first thing you want to do is decide what uh, symbol you want to subtract from uh, from the chart on the left side so as an example we've got CLH7 here if we subtract April from March we're going to yield a negative value which is okay Sometimes spread prices are positive, sometimes they're, sometimes they're negative. You just want to make sure uh, you're using the correct order in terms of subtraction. So what I'm going to do here is subtract April from March, which is going to yield us a negative value because you can see the April price is higher. So on the March contract on the left side, I'm going to add a study here that's called Difference. All right, now there's a couple of different different studies. Okay, One of them is called Bar, one of them is called Single Line. When, most, when people are looking at a spread price, usually they're looking at a single line study. I don't really know why that's the most common, but it just is. So I'm going to use difference single line and click on add. Now, from here, we have to tell the chart a little bit about what we want to do. So we're going to go to the settings section, and you're going to see that the, the, the most important value here that we care about is this option right here, chart to number. What this is basically saying is in the order of operation, what's the second chart number that we're going to be adding in this case when you click there you get a drop down menu and you can pick okay chart number uh, two the April contract that's going to be the second chart in our order of operation so we're effectively subtracting March uh, excuse me April from March now I'll get into some of these other things here in a minute but for the time being let's just go ahead and apply this so we can see that this is by default going into region two I push apply and in the background, you're going to see instant response. All right, we're now getting a line here. The indicator is titled as the spread. CLH7, 5-minute, chart number 1, minus CLJ7, 5-minute, chart number 2, difference of negative 0.69. So we're actually seeing the value of this minus this displayed in a line format. Now, how do we fine-tune this a little bit? Uh, a couple different ways. Just as you may expect, you can go into settings and go into subgraphs and adjust the, the behavior aesthetically of the line. So I could say, okay, let's change this to a blue line, a little bit thicker. And we want to see the value of the line in the y-axis where the prices are. Let's check value label. So if I apply it, now we get this behavior. All right, so this is, a, this is enough for most people. Most people who, who look at these charts, a lot of times they want to see the, the, the main price graphs themselves, but they also want to see the spread price. Some people only want to see the spread price. So if that's the case, in the uh, study section here, go to settings. In the settings and inputs tab, you can choose this option here that says display as main price graph and just push apply and OK. And you can see what that does is that shows the chart now as the main price graph instead of as a, uh, a panel like in region two or three and so forth. So if this is you, if this is what you want, you can actually minimize the April chart and you could just maximize the March chart, which is really just showing the spread price. So this is still a chart of CLH7 as it started, but it's set to have the different study take up the main price graph. If you want to un undo that, if you don't like it, if you go back to studies and settings, you can change the region back to two, uncheck this option that says display as main price graph, and it goes back to the way it started like this. Now we can tile these on the screen again if we want to. Like so. So, uh, and you can squish this down here if it's taking up too much space. But a couple different ways to do it. Uh, people like to do this on interest rates. They like to do it on agricultural products. They like to do it on energies. 
Um, it doesn't have to be the same market. You can subtract one market from another market. Just keep in mind, sometimes the decimal places here can get thrown off, or some people like to use multipliers. So, for example, if you want to subtract two times one market fr uh, from another market, that's where some of these other options come into play in settings. So you have multiplier abilities here. So, for example, if you wanted to subtract, let's say, two... Uh, times the NASDAQ minus one times the S&P, you could do chart number two multiplier, you would change that to two. So the multipliers only come into effect if you want to multiply uh, either chart one or chart two, you know, by X value. All right, so this is, uh, this is the easiest way to generate spread charts. Once you have it set up and saved the way you like it, just make sure you go to file, save. Uh, you can load it up like any other chart uh, when you open up the program. Uh, another thing you might want to keep in mind is that periodically these contracts roll over so you're going to want to make sure that you're either using the automatic rollover feature which is defaulted in our version of Sierra right here automatically rollover future symbol um, if you do that and let's say this rolls into April then you'll want to manually roll this chart into May when rollover approaches so for example you could go to chart settings and you could change this to CLK7 which would give you the May contract once April becomes the front month and March expires all right, if you have any questions on this, just let us know. Uh, talk to your rep in our office or give us a call. Thanks.